Hey everybody, it's Matt Stopa again. Today we're going to be dealing with files. Uh, somebody requested this in the YouTube comment, so I thought it was a good topic to deal with today. Um, we just passed 2,000 views, so that was really cool. I think we're up to like 2150 or something like that. So, uh, like I said, I hope to continue to put out a whole bunch of videos. So, let's get into it. So, files in Ruby. Um, they're it's real nice to use them because they are so simple and so easy. If you've ever used something like the file system in Java, it's really horrible. So, all right, enough about Java. Let's talk Ruby. So, let's open the first one. Uh, opening writing one. Rb. All right, all right. So let's have a look here. The first line. Or we create this new file. We say file.new, and the first thing we're going to be learning about is writing to a file. It's because writing to a file is actually easier than reading from one. So, and you know, to be able to read a file, it's helpful to know how to write one. So, first thing we do is we say file.new, and then we say dot forward slash. So we're saying the current directory, and then we just give it a file name, my file.txt, and then we just pass in w for the second argument to this new method just saying that we're going to be writing to this file and you know in a later video we'll get to all the different things you can do in a file but R for read and W for write typically are what you're going to need so that's the first line so now we have F which has the file reference so then we say F dot puts and then we give it a line right hey this is a line and then we do it again hey this is a second line so f dot puts it's just how like how you put to the screen or put s to the screen uh, it'll just display your line right so and then we say f dot close and that's all there is to it it's just that simple so now let's exit out of there and then run ruby opening writing one dot rb okay you didn't see anything here but let's look in the directory and now we have something called my file dot text so we'll open that up my file dot text and look, it's output your lines. So that's how easy it is. It's just that simple. So cool, we did that. Now let's remove my file.txt because we're going to use that same file. It's going our next example is going to create it as well. So now let's open opening 2.rb. So now this is I want to show you a little bit of a different way you would work with the puts method. Uh, I've actually used this a number of times myself. I wrote a little uh, console-based text editor, and the way I typically, you know, the way I stored the lines was in an array. So line one right here is, hey, this is one line, this is another line, this is a third line. So it's just an array of strings, right? You could store it any way you want, but that's how we're going to do here. And we're going to do the same thing as far as opening the file. And then the only difference now is like we're saying lines.each. So we're going to iterate over each of the lines and then pass in line here. So this is the first one would be, hey, this is one line. And then we say f for file dot puts line. So we iterate over each line and call puts on it. So this is like a practical example of how you would typically use the puts method in the, with the Ruby file stuff. Okay, and then we say f dot close, same thing. All right, so let's quit and then run Ruby. Okay, and let's see what we get. So my file dot text, and as you can see, it printed out all three lines. So getting back to that again, this is like just a practical, practical example of uh, again how you would use it. It's pretty straightforward. Obviously, you iterate over the array, print out the lines, and close the file. You're good to go. All right, so let's remove my file again. And now let's run, oopsie, let's look at opening writing three. All right, so the difference here, if you look at it, it's exactly the same as the last example, but this time instead of puts, we're saying f.print. And why are we doing that? Well, if you noticed, when we say puts, we're putting out all of these lines on a different line, whereas sometimes you know you may want to output them all to the same line and that's what print allows you to do so if we quit and then we run ruby opening writing 3.rb and then we look at my file dot text look it's all on the same line so that's just a, another method that you can use if you want if you do want to print out strings or data on the same line okay so that's it for actually writing to files let's see how we would read them so if we go to our 
root directory for files, then we go ls and then cd2 to reading. And we've got a couple simple examples here. Uh, first thing we're going to look at is the sample.txt. I'm providing this so we can just work with something. Um, so we say sample.txt. This is a great file. Lots of cool stuff and the obligatory moo. All right. So three lines, simple enough, right? All right. So we'll say reading one.rb. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say we're going to create this array called lines. We had one in the last video or in the last example, right? Uh, and then we're going to say file equals file dot open. So last time we said new, we we're creating a new file. Now we're going to say open. And we're just going to pass in the name of the file and then say R for reading because we're just going to read to it. We don't need the permission to write right now. So this is about the only complicated part of the entire thing is if you look here, you have this while loop and you're saying line equals file dot gets. And you may be a little bit confused by that, but what this is doing, you can really forget about line equals for a minute because it's just saying line dot gets. While line dot gets doesn't return us nil, keep iterating over this loop. And so what we're doing is if that's essentially if that's true or regardless of whether that's true or not, we assign the value of file dot gets to line. So uh, it's pulling the first line from the file, right? That's all it's doing. And it's assigning it to, to line. And then while is actually executing its logic based on line, whether line is nil or not. So then once we're actually in the loop, we take the lines array and we assign it the line. And we just do that repeatedly until there's no more lines left and then that's it. And we say file.close. Always remember to close your files. Theoretically, you could eventually run out of file handles. That would be kind of difficult unless you're iterating, iterating over a ton of files. But even still, it's just good practice. Otherwise, you're dependent upon the Ruby garbage collector to clean it up, and that's not a guarantee. So you definitely want to do that. All right, so after that, we just say lines.each. We go over, we say L for the line, and then we print the line to the screen. So. Now let's run Ruby reading 1.rb. And there you go. It's now read those lines from the file and printed them to the screen. Cool. All right. All right. So let's just deal with the last example, which is reading 2. So vi reading 2. Now, what happens if in your file you've decided to open a non existent file? Well, in Ruby, in most languages, you, you basically have to provide some error handling, something that you're going to do in case there's an error. And in this case, there will be an error. And the way we handle these errors in Ruby is we stick things in a begin and up to a rescue block. So everything from begin to rescue, basically if an error is thrown in there, it goes to this rescue block and then you can do whatever you want in there. At this point you said, okay, I'm gonna handle this error, I can figure it out, um, and so the, Ruby is not going to throw the error and crash. So when it finds this non-existent file, we should still be good. And so if you look at rescue, it's got this, you know, hash rocket. This E is what's actually being passed in. So this is the actual error that you have. And so we're saying puts E. So just print the error to the screen. Whatever the error is, let's see it on the screen. Okay, so if we quit that and now we run... Ruby reading to dot RB. See, we get this nice little error. No such file or directory, non existent dot text. Makes sense, right? That's exactly what we want. We could have, in this situation, just gone back. Whoopsie. Yeah, reading to dot RB. We could have just gone and said, well, we don't want to do anything here. So you can just let it fail silently. That's a really bad idea in general. Whenever you have uh, something like an error state, you should probably not just swallow it up because a lot of times someone's going to come into that code, even yourself, at a later date, and you're going to be like, why is this code failing? Everything should be working. And the reason is is that it's swallowing up some error. And that's happened. That's bit me a lot of times when I've looked at other people's code. So I always try to at least print something to the screen or log something in the logger which, you know, we'll get to the logger at some future point, but you can look at what would happen if we got rid of this. 
and we'll just get rid of all this and just run the file again reading to we'll say Ruby Oh, see it's actually crashed our program at this point by saying you know reading to it's giving you the line number three initialize no such file or directory non-existent so you're still getting the error but the difference is you get the whole stack trace because the whole program crashed so to get around doing that you basically need to stick in that begin and rescue block and so we'll deal with you know begin and rescue stuff more in the future but suffice it to say that anytime that you think man this is gonna throw some error that's gonna crash the program you wanna stick it in that begin rescue block alright that's pretty much it and I'll see you guys in the next video hope it was helpful take care